Hi, this is from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book to read to you. Today book is Donald Duck Toy Chain for 1950. So let's get started. Donald Duck had a new toy train in his backyard and it was beautiful too. It had a shiny black engine with a cool car behind where Donald rode because he was too big for the toy engine cab. Donald Train had a coach, a mail car, and a red caboose. Though none of his friends could go inside because it was a toy side train. There was a little station beside the check. Cannonville, the station sign said, and around the station a little valley spread with homes and churches and stores. Only nobody lived there because it was too small and that seems too bad. One day, Donald was laying some new tracks when he came Franged up against a giant big tree. This will have to go, said Donald Duck. It's much too big for my toy train. So he had the big tree moved away. Now up in that tree top was the cozy home of two chipmunks, Chip and Dale. They were the way at the time gathering nuts for their winter food. Soon back they came with great armload of nuts and got ready to climb to their home. But that was, but what was this? The tree was gone. They could not scarcely believe their eyes. In its place, Donald Duck had put a toy side tree just the size for his little toy train. But well, it's not big enough for the home for us, cried Chip. No, sir, cried Dale. Well, this will, well, this will they fix. Where could they live? Two chipmunks sat and fought, but that didn't get them anywhere. So they started slowly walking down the railroad track. Soon they came to the train where Dino had left it. Looks like fun, said Chip. Let's go for a ride, said Dale. So they hopped on to the engine cab, which was just their size. They shoke up the little fire with a shovel of coal, and away they chuggled down the track. They roared through tunnels, up hills, and down. Dale, it was really a wonderful ride. Soon they came to the town, and they rang the engine bell and pulled on the brakes and stopped. Quite a town, said Chip. Look, look around, said Dale. So they rattled the doors of the little stores, but no one was there to sell. They knocked at doors of little houses, but no one answered their knocks. One little door, though, swung open at their touch, so Chip and Dale walked inside. Inside the house, they found chairs and lamps and tables and beds, all exactly chipmunk size, so Chip and Dale moved right in. But not far away, a dangerous march, it was Donald Duck, and Donald was mad. Someone has stolen my chain, he, he framed. Best toy train in the war, he fussed it, and it probably wrecked by now. It isn't everyone can manage a little red train like that. Just then he looked up and saw the train parked at the station as neat as it could be. Near the train, he found tiny footprints leading straight to the little house. Donald went to the window and peeked in. Chip and Dale were curled up in bed, 
taking a nap. Well, isn't that cute, said Donald. What more? They are just the right size. So Donald made friends with Chip and Dale. He delivered a tiny bottle of milk to their door and tiny loaves of bread. And he let them drive his fine toy train while he rode on a coach behind. It's much more fun, said Donald happily, to play with folks who are just the right size. So that was Donald Duck Toy Train for 1950s. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And our next book will be Donald Duck Toy Sailboat.